by fans, for fans, the hog style. And now, here's your host, Sean Conti. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the Redskins the culture was good. And like that, he was gone. News out of Ashburn today is that longtime GM, team president, etc., Bruce Allen is out following a dismal 3 and 13 season. But the heads don't stop rolling there. A flurry of moves, moves greeted fans this morning, and we're here to talk about it right here on the Hogsty. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Support for the Hogsty comes from Manscaped, the best in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Ready or not, the holidays are here. Still struggling to come up with the perfect gift for that special someone in your life? The answer is Manscaped. The Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0 is the perfect gift this holiday season. It includes the Lawnmower 2.0 trimmer, the Crop Preserver Anti Chafing Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Toner Spray, which is infused with cooling aloe vera to keep you from sweating, sticking, and smelling. Trust me, she will love the manly scent of these products. It even comes with a pair of Manscaped boxer briefs to keep you feeling fresh all day long. Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their new Lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary advanced skin safe technology to prevent nicks and snags, has a rechargeable battery, and it's waterproof so you can use it in the shower. Stop using the same trimmer down below that you use on your face. So what are you waiting for? Head over to manscaped.com now and get 20% off your order and free shipping by using the code BIGHEADS. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Promo code BIGHEADS. And we're back. Sean Conti here. Glad to be with you again on the night of nights, the one we've been waiting for for 10 long, lonely years. Joining me tonight are Jamal Forrest, Alex Zeese, and Steve Thomas. Tell me, fellas, where were you when the news broke this morning that the team was finally moving on from Bruce Allen? Man, th- this is like a moment that you're always going to remember. Always. Yes. Isn't it really? It's like, you know, you have your wedding day for those of you out there, you know, who are married. You've got like your graduation you know, day, graduation, yeah, your graduation Maybe you have kids day. born or something. I don't know. <laughs> and up there with those personal fabulous events is today. Right. Because Bruce Allen was fired at long last. The witch is dead. Good riddance. Goodbye. Huzzah. Hope to never, yeah. Huzzah. Hope to, <laughs> huzzah. <laughs> Hope to never see you again. We were trying to find appropriate music to play uh, at the up top of the show, and we stumbled across copyright laws, so you have to settle for my little HTTR thing. But just imagine right now Handel's Messiah playing, because that was what we were trying to find. <laughs> right. Just couldn't find one. It, it, okay, so it's technically – Handel's been dead for 2,000 years or something like that. I don't know. Not remember. quite that long. Not quite that long. But <laughs> So there's no like rights that he has, but anytime someone records it, they get – a copyright. Oh, so, okay, so what, what language are we speaking right now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen, classical if anybody's music. ever called Jamal, classical music comes on as his waiting music, so I'm not buying this ignorance. From oh, Jamal yeah. <laughs> that's de- First off, that's the default. That's what we want to talk about. Uh-huh. My, my, my playback tone got it. It was expired, and I got to fix it. That's all that is. <laughs> yeah, your but, default is like Mozart, which is the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, you got to blame Verizon at this point. I tried to call them, and they told me I had like a, I had to wait and call back and go through an app that I didn't have. So yeah, I, I quit. So that's 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 me. That's that's how you identify me as the classical uh, Jamal. <laughs> yeah. so, um, look, I know where I was at. Um, it, I, I I just sat down at my desk. Uh, I was telling Alice, you know, I did. Nine hours. I clocked in at nine hours, and hopefully my bosses aren't listening. I did ten minutes of work, but <laughs> yeah. um, the first thing I did when I clocked in was get an alert that oh, Bruce Allen is not just out of football operations; he is gone completely. And I um, I like it was a huge weight that lifted off my back. I was like, I I was revigorated. You know what I'm saying? I, as soon as as soon as that happened, I started typing. I started writing. 
I got some things in the works. I, I put out a little article and I was I, I felt like a brand new man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, don't don't worry, Jamal. I, I don't think you're alone. I think anybody who works in the government knows like nothing happens this week. It's on just days, what yeah. happened. It's just the way. Well, government first is. of all, it's like Jamal, you are an early riser, man, because I got your text at like five forty in the morning. Yeah, my yeah. time, which was six forty your time, which is still damn right. early. I was uh, I get up at five o'clock in the morning to get to work at seven. Um, but uh, yeah, I was I was up pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> Well, th- this is, uh, I mean, no matter where you were, this is such a huge moment. Did you guys catch this video that came out late last night of Bruce Allen and Dan Snyder and Alex Smith kind of passing each other in the breezeway of the stadium? Did you right. see this? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they just walk in opposite directions. A beautiful thing to see. I mean, Steve, I know you have maybe some some epic Bruce Allen things queued up. Maybe you can hit us with a couple of them just to to drive home how truly momentous this moment is. Oh, you departure. mean the, some of the awful things he's done? Yeah, yeah um, just give it one final okay. take. One final take. And, and most of this stuff comes in my Collective Sins of Bruce Allen article, which is a truly a, a, the, a, a masterpiece <laughs> written by me. Um, so, you know, there's so many things. Let's start with the cheerleader brothel. Right. Good Lord. D- don't <laughs> forget that this team was sending – Scantily clad cheerleaders down to hang out in Costa Rica with uh, sweet holders and ordering them to go to clubs with these old, dirty old men, right. which I'm sure made those women feel nothing hey, like hey. objects to be objectified. They're not all dirty. Yeah. They are probably all old, but, you know, they're all rich, so I'm sure they shower quite a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. But I'm sure these women didn't feel objectified at all from having to do that. And, you know, what did Bruce Allen do that? He, he trotted out Doug Williams. Right, you know, to you talk said, to. What's the big deal? You know? Yeah, exactly. Doug, we love you. Perhaps not the right one to talk about a scandal like that. Um, <laughs> so there's that. You know, we we had the rumors of Scott McLuhan's drinking used right. as reason to fire him for cause. Oh, it, right, that was a classic. Yeah, that's you know, and that's that's a good one. We had the salary cap scandal. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. although they were in the right. Technically speaking, what you didn't do is ask anybody else in the NFL about it and thereby cost the team $36 right, right. million dollars in you, cap space. You may have been in yeah. the right, but you shouldn't have done it anyway. <laughs> you were right. Yeah. You called the quarterback who you're trying to negotiate with by the wrong first name. Uh, on one over, of your only, and yeah. over and over. On one of your only appearances in years on television. You fired the beloved team president of uh, business operations because he was becoming too popular. Right. Brian Lafamina. Remember right. that? We and because that, he was you know. telling the truth about the fact that no one was coming to football games. Yeah, oh, and by the way, about that. he was you completely also, transparent and Bruce Allen didn't like it. <laughs> you also alienated the best player the Redskins have had this generation, right. at least since, since Chris Samuels. Or this decade, since he drafted. He was the first, first uh, I think, first draft pick, right, since that he had. You yeah. know what? No, uh, no, Bruce Allen came in 2009. And, the end and, of it, though. Well, no, he, it, was, uh, he was technically. Yeah, you're Bruce's right because that pick. was because He's it right. was Shanahan's first. Yeah, yeah you're right. And so you first, alienated first your first pick, the guy who is probably the best player, certainly in the past 15 years. And he you know, blames you for that. nearly his his death. He literally <laughs> blames you for almost killing him. Right. So congratulations. Right. On yeah. that one. And, you know, that's and not even to mention the, the – oh, I'm sorry. Did you have more, Steve? Please. No, I have a lot more, but, I mean, you know, <laughs> we can read this all night, but let's get on with yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say this is in addition to the plethora of player after player after player that mm-hmm. he – when he had – when he presided over people that were coming onto this team, they just – none of them panned out. Oh, yeah. He started strong with Trent Williams. Yeah. But what a rock. Th- 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 that is – believe we were close. Yeah, That's right. just what I read is just the highlights of the non-player stuff. Okay, right. <laughs> we didn't get into the football stuff with this dude. I mean, right. there's so many things we have to get into, but I want to kind of backtrack to one his passing of the night with Dan. Uh, just an idiotic question: Do you think he came back to DC even, or did he just say, "Hey, my house now is in California. I'm just going to go"? Like, you know what? I mean, why would you come back? Really, you sold your house say, here. Look, it looked honestly like he didn't know. Because he told the media in the tunnel, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and apparently rumors were that he was, you know, talking about next season as late as the end of last week. Yeah. But, I, I don't know how he could have been so deaf, dumb, and blind to not know, you know. Well, I mean, that's part of why he's gone. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but that's also a credit to uh, Dan Snyder, though, in a way. Because, you know, you, you kind of kept things under wraps for as much as you can. And there were no leaks coming out. 
I mean, there were um, murmurs, it, but nothing. I, I mean, murmurs yeah. in the yeah, I agree. Murmurs in the sense that you knew that he was out of football operations, but nobody's seen the the part of him getting fired coming because the, for the whole, entire weekend, all we knew was he's getting removed as uh, president of football operations. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I just feel like that's a credit for at least I would say the people around Dan Snyder and himself because. Uh, if he was conducting this search the whole time and he was having consultants talking to him this whole time, um, trying to get insight and get some help on how to move forward, then yeah, um, credit to him because like, it's 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 kind of incredible how nobody knew he was going to get fired, and I think that was like the, that was clearly the best, the joyous moment that we all that we were all talking about, and this it's incredible. Well, and uh, let me tell you why there are no leaks, Jamal, because the leak in chief. <laughs> Was yeah, the exactly. guy getting fired? Exactly. <laughs> did you exactly know, my... did, did you notice there were no like videos that came out of Bruce Allen smoking a joint with some coeds, or there were no yeah. rumors <laughs> about his drinking problem that suddenly surfaced, or any rumors uh, about how you know it, he had argued with the owner about you know signing Reuben Foster as a PR nightmare. Uh, you know, yeah. Alex is being a little bit facetious, but I'm you're not. really not. Yeah, I, I mean, no. I think you're right. The I mean... number one guy who was doing all these leaks, and I have no hard proof, but it's kind of obvious who it was. It was yeah. Bruce. Br- yeah. Yeah, the the uh, standard we can... operation is, if you're out, Bruce drags you through the mud, and you're out. Because we can attest to this. Mm-hmm. We can attest that leaks come out of that building. Oh yeah, you know, when they're getting rid of people, they've got, leaks have come to us about stuff like that. Um, we don't we don't I, put them out there because one, it's petty, and you can tell where it's coming from. Yeah, that's exactly right, and you can't substantiate any of this stuff. But point is, it's clearly Bruce. This is part of why he's evil. And I just like to point out that Walter Football rated this move firing of of Bruce oh, Allen Lord. as a D a, a D or D minus or what? D plus. Yeah. And, and, and he went on and on. He follows us on Twitter, at least before the show he did, uh, <laughs> maybe not after. Cause that's just freaking stupid. I mean, is Walter not paying any attention? I like to the Walter Redskins football whatsoever? too. Yeah. That, that's weird. I mean, um, some of this stuff is off base and that yeah. is one of those things that completely has me scratching my head. Cause it, it really, it, I'll leave it alone. Cause I, I, I didn't even plan to talk about him. <laughs> Well, yeah, I didn't mean to give him credit either, but it was just so ridiculous. I had to, I slipped out. But the I mean, point is, in the tunnel thing, to get back to that, at, what was very interesting about it was that you saw Alex Smith, a couple of the minority owners, right, and then and Dan Snyder come out and go one way, and then Bruce crossed, going went the other direction, didn't say a word to anybody, and that right there should have told everybody that it was over, mm-hmm. you know. But except everybody, but but Bruce apparently knew it. Yeah. 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 Listen, I mean, today th- today was the day that Dan Snyder's balls dropped. You <laughs> right. know, I really did. They grew three sizes today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it, it kind of makes you wonder because you're sitting there with the team has been poor in the past. The team has gotten four wins in the past. This is only one less. It's kind of like, why is this rock bottom? Whereas other times when we've had a shell of a team, mm-hmm. a coach on the outs and a poor declining fan base, like why wasn't that rock bottom? And I think it's just like, think about the, confluence of events this year with trent williams with uh you know the uh, the dismal schedule with another draft class kind of underperforming it just seemed like finally we had the perfect storm of all the negative things come together we really needed this we really needed this rock bottom and it is rock bottom because it ain't just bruce allen so you know that i mean yeah dan stepped up and did what had to be done and Mm -hmm. i give him immense amount of credit for it he did it himself yeah, we're the firings that we're about to talk about here in just a second. He's done it himself. This right. is like the day that you know, if you know, if you've ever been anybody who's around people who've had substance abuse problems, at some point they're in the gutter enough, right. and enough bad things have happened that they just have absolutely had enough, and that's the moment they turn their life around for real. That's right. That's what happened to the to Dan Snyder and the Washington Redskins today. Hopefully, well, I, it was I was very about to say hopefully because this this could be a this could be a major point. Somebody pointed it out on Twitter. Um, and it was really, it was, I, I, kind of, I, I agree with him um, in a sense. Uh, essentially, 25 or 20, 20 plus years, I said, because I don't know the exact number right now, but 20 plus years you deal with Dan Snyder and his incompetence. Um, and Steve, you just brought to it, like, this could be a turning point where he faces his demons uh, and approaches this uh, in a more direct way, in a more definite way, and just with absolute awareness that, he has to do better. Um, and like you said, we're going to talk about the firing soon. 
But also, this may be a turning point. We don't know because we're all in an optimistic uh, mood because of what happened uh, with the big guy and, and Bruce Allen. But it could be a turning point. And that's that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to, to figure out moving forward. Absolutely. Um, let's, uh, we got so much to talk about Bruce Allen and I know we're going to talk about Bruce Allen through the off season. We've got a lot of firings to talk about today. So if you want to give up some final thoughts about Bruce or maybe one final message to him, I say go for it right now so we can talk about these other guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, good ride. Goodbye. Good rinse. And don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> peace. Um, I say to him. Yeah. Peace out. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad you're gone, uh, Bruce, because for the longest and, I, I was I was truly you you along with the Redskins, but mainly you were the reason why I strongly considered uh, packing my bags for a temporary moment and not caring about this team. Yeah. Um, but because you're gone, you know I got a little I'm rejuvenated, so I appreciate you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you you inadvertently brought a little energy to this fan base. Thanks a lot, Bruce. <laughs> uh, I got nothing to say to him. So I thought you were really going to have something we were going to have to bleep out, Alex. No, nope, I have nothing <laughs> He's to not say wrong. to he him. He doesn't have to do that. Ever. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you're, you're right, Jamal. That's it. He's sober. It's a darn shame. We'll get a couple beers in Alex, and then we'll ask him what he thinks about <laughs> I mean, I've had a couple <laughs> beers. I just got nothing to say to him. <laughs> no, I think, actually, I think you've got the right attitude. Let's not waste any more time on this loser. Yeah. Peace, dude, and I pity the team that you end up on next. I don't think he'll end up um, anywhere. I, I Actually, I, I would be willing to make a bet. Bruce does not get another NFL job after this. Actually, that's kind of a cool wager. Why don't we just real quickly say right now, Alex is voting no. I see where you're coming from. I'm going to say he slides into something. Mm. You know, there, were ta- there was a rumor that he's trying to go to the Rams. <laughs> I, yeah, I heard mumbling. Yeah, I heard that too. That. Well, the way their too. organization is shaping up and, and the way they're imploding mm-hmm. um, structurally, I, you know, hey, they they may be desperate and, and think that his situation is a little bit. I mean, they may. I mean, actually, McVay knows him, so I actually no shot. McVay yeah, knows. No. <laughs> I just <laughs> forgot about that. Sean McVay goes, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Listen, I mean, the Rams McVay ownership knows. is all wacky and screwed up too. That's true. So uh, you know, it's kind of like throwing you know a grenade into a box of other grenades. You know, if you send them to the Rams. Um, right. I'm going to say he ends up doing something in the NFL, consulting something. So I'm going to say yes. Maybe maybe not this year, but at some point. It'll happen for him. Yeah. I think I think I'm with you and it doesn't give me any pride to say that. Um, I don't care. I, I really don't. As long as you're nowhere near my team, do whatever you're going to do. I couldn't care less. You know what, Bruce? Yeah. Go to the Cowboys. That's what you yeah, should absolutely. do. <laughs> absolutely. Head coach. Bruce Allen for head coach Cowboys. Um Okay, we've got two other guys definitely we need to talk about firing, and I don't know how you guys prioritize these, but I kind of want to talk about Mr. Larry Hess because this is such a problem going back for so long. Mm -hmm. Think about how many players have gotten injured. Think about how many players have had rehabs that stretch on and on and on, and the injuries never seem to get better. Mm -hmm. And this may also be... uh, tied in with the Trent Williams health stuff too. I don't really know enough about exactly what he's overseeing, but I do know that injuries and health has been a huge problem and a common refrain for the Redskins. The entire staff is now gone. Everyone under Hess, including him. So right. how does that grab you guys? Well, well, let's talk about Hess for a minute because we don't know a lot about him. I don't think fans know much right. about him, but some basics. He has been in charge of this staff uh, for 17 years. Ridiculous. So, most of Dan Snyder's run, and you know, not shockingly, most of the time that we've had these health issues, it, it's been under him. So right. you know, that's worth noting right off the bat. Uh, the team's historically had health issues pre Gruden. You can go back through Shanahan. Shanahan's had some terribly unhealthy teams. Uh, the only coach in Snyder's tenure who was reasonably okay was Gibbs, and and his teams were just like in the average ballpark when it came to health. I remember doing a whole like breakdown of this one year oh i did i wrote a huge article i think you did one too yeah but i I remember looking year by year at each team and yeah mine only went back to 2009 i think because that was where the pro football reference database i was using stopped so well uh, um yeah but anyway we've we've had a bad history of health issues i've never really known who to blame for this because the redskins are drafting stupidly i mean they're drafting guys that have massive injury problems in college Mm -hmm. jordan reed you know chris thompson darius guys to just to name a few robert griffin yeah 
Yeah, Robert Griffin. I mean, there's been a whole bunch of them. They're not drafting healthy people. And so I, I have a hard time blaming the training staff to that extent. But listen, I mean, I would fire Larry Hess every day and twice on Sundays if I meant getting Trenton Williams back in the building and right. happy. You know, and so Larry Hess, another dude, you know, peace out. Hope you're okay. Uh, you know, hope you catch on somewhere else. I, don't, I have no ha- hate in my heart for you, but if it gets us Trenton Williams back, you know, deuces. Well, absolutely. I'm into that. Now, I also want to point out, and like kind of a shout out to all of this, you know, in addition to, you know, guys getting injured and the kind of rehab drags on and the injuries kind of morph, and we've seen that a million times, there was also a rash a couple years ago of just constant hamstring problems. Do you remember this at all? Yeah. DJ yeah, yeah. kept getting hamstrings. Everyone kept getting hamstrings. And it's just kind of like, are we not stretching before the game? Are we not, you know, working out, working out our lower bodies Doing the you know, basics healthy enough? Correctly. Like, yeah. It's just. Something didn't seem to be adding up. I am so in favor of anyone who had any hand in strength and conditioning being gone. I'm so I'll tell you this, that some of the people actually really know training and stuff um, have watched the videos of the workouts and stuff and critiqued the techniques that the players are being taught. You know, like the weightlifting techniques. That's none of us can probably do it. Jamal, you may be able to, but certainly Alex Sean and I can't. No. <laughs> but, but I've heard the experts, you know, who are coaches and stuff crit- criticize Larry Hess's training methods that, you know yeah and i can't i mean who knows i don't know but I, I, I've heard that. I mean the only other thing i think i i think that's worth mentioning about larry hess is uh quentin dunbar tweeted out pretty quickly oh larry's oh, gone yeah. good or something along those lines oh yeah i didn't see that <laughs> yeah quentin dunbar seems pretty happy that larry hess is gone <laughs> see, when there's smoke there's fire that tells me all i need to know yeah. i'm happy with that um yeah, okay con con kind of corroborated his story too uh mentioning, you know, that he heard over the years a lot of complaints about the training staff and specifically uh, has. So uh, it's, it's no secret that, you know, that was a that was a huge issue in the last few years, you know, just dealing with um, being at the top of the in, in a bad way, being at the top of the leaders and, and injuries per season. Um, you know, that that doesn't help. And it's like three consecutive years. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just it's just ridiculous. Um, okay. Anything else about Hess or, Hess or are we ready to move on to the next guy? Um, yeah, yeah I do have something. Uh, it, it's not about him in general uh, or him specifically, but it does tell you that from what I understand, um, Hess was really close. I can't remember who said this, but Hess was close to Dan. Um, and I think this is important because uh, when you're looking at how Dan is evaluating his team right now, you got to see that these guys that is being at least addressed. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he's spoken to more people and there may be some more announcements to come, but the people that we know that's been addressed to this point, um, these are tough decisions to make. Um, and it also, it again goes back to the fact that he's self-aware of what has to happen. Um, regardless yeah. of the outcome, we don't know what it is just yet. We have to wait and see, but it just tells you that we know that he's at least facing the issue head on. Um, and we have to see how he how he continues to replace these guys and, and the structure surrounding uh, the organization and soon soon to be head coach. But uh, Hess is a guy that you want to pay attention to and along with others because these are some tough decisions. And if you're getting rid of people that you've known and that you that you were close to, it also shows you that you're really, you're really serious and you're ready to move on and, and get out of your comfort zone. Like I said, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, Dan had a tough day. You know, mm-hmm. he did some things today that I never thought he could, never gave him credit for. But he probably you know, didn't want to do. Pro- certainly didn't want to do. I mean, he lost his putt-putt buddy and, you know, drinking buddy and, and Bruce Allen. Like Jamal said, he had a long-time relationship with Larry Hess, and he had to sit those guys down man-to-man and say, look, you're out. That is a tough thing to do. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, like Bruce Allen will be fine, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Bruce Allen's got millions of dollars. I don't know how much an NFL head trainer makes, but it's certainly not millions, would be my guess. Well, that's probably a tougher, over 17 that's a, years he's made a couple million. Probably, but, but I don't know. I have no idea, but, you know, it's a right tough, right it's that. a tough, it's a tough thing to do. And I, for the, for maybe the first time ever, give Dan credit, uh, Snyder a mince credit for uh, what happened. Have you guys today. ever had to fire anybody? It is not a fun thing to do. Yes, I have. Yeah. I've, I've, had to fire a whole bunch of people. No, I had to break up with my girlfriend. <laughs> That's not. That the might same have been thing. a good. That might have been a good thing, though, Jamal. Depending on the circumstance. Look, man, yeah, it was, that was it easy. was rough. 
<laughs> if, and if you've never seen a grown man cry in front of you because you fired him, it's not the same thing. <laughs> right. you no, I, think right. I, I love what you guys said just said though it's kind of like we've been doing the show for five years imagine sitting one of us here at the show down and being like you know what we talk the other guys talk then you know what you just you're not on the show well, that Sean, would be it's funny you bring that it's up funny, yeah i was gonna say it's funny sean it's yeah. <laughs> same thought it's funny yeah they, they were holding they were holding it they told me to not say anything to you um but <laughs> y'all know. be careful <laughs> just for entertainment versions all for entertainment versions. Good. We're gonna do it live on the air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but this is a, Sean's last show. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, you, you get my point. It, it, that would be a very hard discussion to have. And but you know, Absolutely. Bruce Allen's ten it's years. A... Larry Hess is seventeen. That that your your point is very. That would be a very difficult conversation. Mm-hmm. And it does, like Jamal said, show he's committed to this being a real turnaround. So yeah, absolutely wonderful. He um, some beat ads today. He did. Yeah, yeah he did. The next um, thing that and, needs to happen, he needs to. Whenever they hire a coach, it's going to be a press conference. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Sean, but um, Dan needs to stand up, do a real press conference, make a statement, and say something like, listen, all this ultimately comes down to me. We're moving into a new era. The buck stops here today, now, and this is a new era of Redskins football. Let's move forward and forget about the past. Do you have any questions? And sit, sit there and take questions from the assembled media. We will try to be there people when this happens if they let um, us. but if they if they let us um but dan needs to do that if dan could do that and then introduce the new gm and the new head coach all in one that would be it truly would bring people back i'm convinced mm. i think it yeah. would help I, I, but i think there's going to be a long process for them to bring people back and that's probably a topic for another show but oh we got yeah we got plenty of time to talk about yeah uh, um, talk about all that but yeah, I know we have one more guy who may or may not have been fired that we got to get to, right? So yeah, so the, well, this let's let's just take this because I think uh, we're this is the unclear one, right? The, I've heard rumors both that he's on his way out, that he's not on his way out. Of course, we're talking about Alex Santos, who is the director of pro personnel, correct? So correct. What's kind of the state of the rumors now? Are you guys aware of it. this? Or? Yeah, I got it. So this started with Kareem Copeland, who we don't know at the Washington post and Kareem put out there that Alex Santos was fired. And right. then he later this afternoon, meaning what day is today? Monday mm-hmm. um, said, and I quote from Twitter, looks like the decision on director of post personnel, Alex Santos is not finalized. He was told at a late afternoon meeting that he's safe. That's on me. Lots of moving parts today. So he may or may not be gone. It looks like he's probably in. Right. But there's okay. other things that are going to happen. Okay, I, that's the one thing I think we can tell you. This is not over with. Well, there's a lot of chaos going on at Redskins Park right now. There's going to be more people leaving. The, the yep. fact that he even put out there that somebody else is being fired means eventually other people in that, uh, you know, scouting department are probably going to be let go. You know, there's no Which way that in favor of. Alex he just came up with that on his own. You know, I, I know some people don't trust the you know beat writers to tell the truth, but. These guys aren't dumb enough to just make up, oh, this guy's gone. No, he heard that from somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, you know, he must have heard that somewhere. So my guess is you are going to see a shakeup to the, you know, scouting department really soon. Yeah. And I, like I said, I think that is the right move. This rebuild or reorientation, whatever you want to call it, doesn't count as much to me if you don't get all the rot out as much as you can. So oh, anyone that's kind everything of, on fire. Yeah. yeah, I mean, anyone that's in a leadership position, at least, I mean, they've got to go. So um, I yeah, am for I, that. I, I Unfortunately, agree. I don't think everyone's going to go. Like, I think uh, Eric Schaefer's probably safe because we're, you know, there have been a lot of people saying he's probably next in line to take Bruce's job, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. So I think there's going to be some internal people kept on, but... yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's sparing. I mean, that's all we can say, but much more moves to come, I'm sure. Um, we haven't heard anything about Minuski and any of these other kind of major heads on the team yet, but obviously, you know, news might be coming. But let's talk about some more definitive rumors we've heard a little bit about. How does this whole Ron Rivera thing strike you guys? I mean, this is the big rumor that's coming through the Redskins world now is that not only that it's a possibility, but it looks likely in fact as early as like right away so how is that striking it sounds like it's basically a done deal from from what people are saying online and i I think because this is coming out to on tuesday this show we probably would be best just assuming it is everybody right (laughs) Um, if it if not you know this show will be funny but right (laughs) (laughs) so let's just Um, say it's ron rivera 
Uh, my first reaction is of the rumored names that Dan Snyder was actually courting. It's the best one we heard. You know, yeah, I, so far. I think Steve and I would have both been flipping tables if it was Urban Meyer. Uh, yeah. Marvin Lewis, nice guy, but doesn't really I'm excite a, you. I'm a Marvin Lewis fan. I, I, I'm a fan, but I, I don't think he would, like the fan base in general, I don't think would be happy. Oh, the fan base wouldn't have been happy, but uh, I mean, Marv, if anybody had a worse owner to deal with, it's Marv Lewis. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Now, Mike Brown in Cincinnati is probably the worst owner in football, including Dan Snyder. And, you know, he's by far the cheapest. There's a story out there, if you guys want to look this up, just Google TJ Hoosman Zada and Jockstrap and read that story. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, okay. Yeah, it basically, he was talking about in the very early days of his career how the Bengals refused to buy new athletic supporters and offer everybody used athletic supporters. Oh, well, that's disgusting. Yeah. yeah, that's gross. And so, you know, that's what you're dealing with in Cincinnati. So Marv was like flying into a 20 knot headwind at all times. So I actually think Marv would have been good, good hire here. Oh, he's a leader type, but Ron Rivera. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, I don't want to be negative at all. In fact, I like Rivera. He's been to a super bowl within the last 10 years or mm-hmm. pretty close. If it's not within the 10 years, it's gotta be within 10 years, right? So it was just a couple yeah. years ago. So the only problem with him is it's Cam Newton. Cam Newton kind of transcended football for a while there and seemed to carry the offense, in my opinion. I think Ron Rivera is a pretty good coach. I don't think I wouldn't necessarily call him cutting edge in terms of his gameplay, except he had this incredible number one player in Cam Newton that kind of carried his offense. Well, I think he's great on defense. That's my only concern. Thing he's about. a defensive coach. He doesn't yeah. manage the offense at all. He'll roll with whoever the offensive coordinator is. That, that's and, kind of been his M.O., I hope. Yeah, and that's that's kind of his like the the issues that he run into on in Carolina. First, first off, I think that to start off twenty twenty and the new decade, I think that you're off to a good start with Ron Ron Rivera. Like you can't really go wrong um, in terms of like how the, the selection of the the head coach himself. Um, there's more things to be determined uh, because. When when all the dust settles down, I think that's the the right word. You got to understand like who's really surrounding um, Ron Rivera in terms of coaching and front office. How is it structured, and what are the responsibilities, or what is the the power structure in terms of uh, allowances? I think that's I think that may be the word. But like, what are people able to do in in, in their capacity? Uh, but with that being said, Ron himself. I think his situation, um, he, he is a defensive-minded guy. Uh, and Which like, I love, by you'll, the way. Yeah, and you'll know once he gets here, like, he's structured, he's detail-oriented, and he's disciplined. Uh, his, his units are usually disciplined on both sides of the ball, to be honest with you. Um, they just – they just that's what is instilled with them. I don't know when, but, you know, he just finds a way to get that done. And he's a, he's a decent motivator. Um, and that works. So when you look at Ron – you understand that, yes, 2015 was his best season, um, and that can't be taken away with him. Like You can't say he only had one – like, not you all, but people have said that today. Uh, he's only had one good year. No, that's not true. He's also had a 12-4 and four year, um, uh, three straight division titles. They, the record wasn't as – the records weren't impressive, but he's finding a way to win, um, and you can't really take that away from him. If you say the NFC South is bad, well, guess what? The NFC East is no different. Like you can find ways to win in this division. I don't think the NFC um, South is bad, man. <laughs> I think it's no, actually no. No, I'm you're one, you're talking man. about right now, but you're not. You're they've you're, had you their go years. Back. They've yeah, had their. You got to go back yeah. into the to the periods like where they where there was discussion that NFC South was the worst division in football. Yeah, um, those years were probably early on in his career, though. Like the Saints have been consistently good for the last ten years. No, they haven't. They they went straight. They went three straight years, seven and nine. Like I remember that Andrew Brees was going for five thousand yards and not making the playoffs because uh, Jamal's right. I mean, the NFC South was the worst division of football there a couple of years. Um, but I'm, I'm only saying this to say you have a chance in the NFC East and you'll have your struggles. But the the reason why he's had his issues lately is because he's uh, he's been going through coaching changes. He's been his players has been leaving him, his staff been leaving him, but he's also failed to really uh, get create the 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 chemistry and unity that he once had early on um on the on the defensive side of the ball it, it has failed him um 
and he's also failed to incorporate new school t- uh, new school coaching methods, uh, specifically analytics. Not a big deal, but at the same time, when you refuse things that are opportunities to help you improve your game and how you think on the field, I mean, well, yeah, on the field for him, um, you know, sometimes it can hinder you. Uh, now, that's not a big deal, but at the same time, your offense as well has not been that productive. Um, recently, you got help with Nora Turner, and that's great, and that can be a good thing for Kevin O'Connell as well because there's a, there's a coach in place. But if you struggle to address the offensive side of the ball with the right coach, the right players, and only focus on defense, you can have the same situation with a young quarterback who's not as dynamic as uh, Cam Newton, um, and you may find yourself struggling again and not being able to win games. Right. Right. No, I think that is absolutely right on. I'm thinking all those same things. The other thing that's kind of the other thing I think about Ron Rivera is think about it this way. All of that is true. The struggles are obvious. It's going to be a slow climb out of the the dregs of the NFL here. But it's kind of a win win situation for him. It's hard to be worse than the team is right now. And one thing that will definitely improve, which I think is kind of what you guys are saying here right now, is ironically the culture. The culture is going to improve mm-hmm. probably the most under Rivera because he's actually going to conduct practices in the way that an NFL coach should. He's going to have accountability. Maybe we're going to struggle. Maybe what Jamal is saying about kind of coaching up a less dynamic quarterback is true. But I think no matter what, this is going to be such a human, huge improvement around Redskins Park. Let me give some insight into Ron Rivera from my perspective. Um, and this is why I'm actually, I actually think he's a bit more cutting edge than you might think. And I think he's going to be good for Dwayne Haskins in particular because well, that's good. Ron, Ron Rivera is not a West Coast offense guy. He's not a near Coriel guy. Ron Rivera's offensive system revolves around the old Earhart Perkins system, which is a lot simpler. It's basically a concept-based system, whereas, like, Jamal probably knows this from when you played. But, like, when I played a million years ago in high school, it was it was Coriel. <laughs> and what you do is you – you every every uh, receiver has a number, you know, mm-hmm. and so the play calls are really long, and it's, you know, X6, you know, Y5, you know, you know okay. it's that system, okay? And West Coast offense – is very long and cumbersome and identifies every pattern by my number two. And really it's just a, it's kind of a pass for short passing for a system. Well, what Earhart Perkins is, it's very short. It's, it's two words are a concept. Okay. This is what the Patriots, this comes from, it can't, it comes from a couple of decades ago, but the Patriots perfected this. If anybody ever wondered why the Patriots can run no huddle offense so effectively and so fast, it's because they're using this Earhart Perkins system and where two words will tell it'll be like the, the example I I read an example of this today. I can't remember the exact words, but it'll be two words and a number. And the two words are is the route concept on the left, the route concept on the right, and the protection scheme. Everybody knows it. They scream it out and it's done. And because it's a concept like that, it's a lot easier to use and a lot easier to learn. And so a guy like Dwayne Haskins, who's used to something similar at Ohio State, because Urban Meyer didn't call in complex plays either. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it'll be good for that, and I th- and um, um, this sort of system is is kind of the new cutting edge way of doing things. Really, now the beauty of it is it's very adaptable. You wonder why the Patriots are so adaptable. You know, they go from power running to Tom Brady short passing all the time. Mm-hmm. They went Randy Moss. It's this system is very adaptable. It, it's this is not a plug and play thing. Like let's be a robot and we must do this. Like Jay Gruden was very robotic about things mm-hmm. sometimes. You can cut and paste things in and out of these play calls. The quarterback at the line can change one word in it, and it will completely change to another concept depending on what he's seeing. So I think this is the kind of thing that that Dwayne Haskins can thrive in is a system like that. And the other thing is defensively, he's known as a 4-3 guy. He comes, he played for the Bears in 1985, remember? Yeah, he played in the, the 46. famous 46. And the, all the 46s is a 4-3 with the strong safety up in the box, and then the strong, the weak side linebacker flips over hey, the strong hey, side. Steve, do we have a strong safety who plays good in the box? Yeah, we do. <laughs> We've got Landon Collins, who's basically a linebacker. Right. You know, and then in the 46 wouldn't work today because they're basically playing yeah. cover one and all that. But but point is, he's a 4-3 guy. He did use basically a 3-4 concept last year in trying to revive the awful Carolina defense. But at heart, he's a 4-3 guy. So we've heard rumors this week that Dan Snyder likes a 4-3. So if you take this Earhart Perkins system – that mm-hmm. I think is going to be good for Dwayne Haskins, and you couple that with maybe more of a 4-3 base 
then I think this thing could completely change overnight. Yeah, all I want for Christmas, Steve, all I wanted, I should was say. That was that too football three. nerdy for everybody? No, no. I, was, I was actually going to say I didn't know the system that he ran or that he – that he. I didn't know his philosophies in particular, so that was actually really good, and I have no complaints. I'm very and interested. That, I mean, well, I mean, that's I why you see that – three stuff, but I didn't even I, – I was always under the impression that most of his offenses ran through whoever the coordinator was. So when – Norv was there. They were running more Norv's Air Coriel style offense, and you know they kind of adjusted it based off the OC, not I, his is, own. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, and Norv hadn't been there that long, but this no. is way this is the system that Ron has been using. Interesting, you know, and and the beauty of it is like you, this is why you see like there's years when it's very quarterback based with Cam Newton, and it's Cam Newton run all all everywhere, and then you know they had the great tight end, mm-hmm. you know there. And so the offense is geared sometimes more to the tight end. It's very adaptable, I think. So maybe, and, so so maybe he uh, and to to what you're saying, Steve. So what he'll what he may do, whatever it is that Kevin O'Connell truly believes in, um, maybe he tries to incorporate uh, what what is it called again? The offense that you Earhart Perkins. Earhart Perkins. So maybe he tries to incorporate the I'll just call it Perkins yeah. with uh, Kevin O'Connell in in terms of just simplifying the play calls. And that gives Kevin O'Connell in the off season to just uh, focus on how he's going to simplify these these play calls uh, to help the the offense out and to help them have more time at least on the uh, sure. the play clock to try and get things situated pre snap. That's exactly my point. Assuming exactly. it's Kevin O'Connell, of course. And assuming that you know, yeah, that Dan Snyder doesn't force whatever system Kevin O'Connell likes onto Ron Rivera, you know, that's possible. But. Um, uh, you know, I, I just think it's it's simplifying the play calls alone mm-hmm. will will be of tremendous benefit to a young quarterback. I agree. Yeah. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Don't you do that, Jamal and Steve. Don't you dare give me hope. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we are uh, – God, what a night. We've got tons of news to go over. Um, let's table Rivera for now, at least until the news is official because we don't want to put the uh, horse before the cart here. So – Let's talk instead about a little bit of the player moves that have been going on in the last few hours. So um, we have heard major things. Obviously, the biggest one would probably be Colt McCoy, longtime Gruden guy, stayed in Texas after the Cowboys game, right. not going to be returning to the Washington area or to the team. Um, anything that that conjures up in your in your heart or soul, guys? Um, I like Colt McCoy. I mean, he's not a great NFL quarterback. You know, he's a career backup, basically. I like the guy. He kind of had lousy circumstances here. His whole you know, there was a point in time, yeah, that if he had managed to stay healthy, he was going to be the starter here at one yeah. point in time. You know, but he doesn't fit at all now that Jay Gruden's gone, and he's not going to be back. And I don't know if he's even going to ever play football again. No, he might you know, be might it, be it for him. at this point. Yeah, it might yeah. be it for him. Yeah. Well, you can't he say no one tried harder. <laughs> and, yeah, he played through so many uh, – pancake injuries you know where he mm-hmm. just got flat but uh it sucks that he so can never play for a great coach or a great team yeah I, I am interested in i was interested in seeing how that 2014 season would have turned out if he just stayed at the quarterback position versus uh him being forced out of the starting role because somebody else was healthy um because it was it was kind of forced like you knew you knew who was playing really good at a, at a decent level and who had the momentum at the position but I mean, outside of that, you know, I, I you know, I wish I, I thank Colt because, you know, he's been a cool guy um, and, and quiet and, and non-controversial, um, con- whatever the word is. Uh, but, you know, it's worked out for him here. He's he's done. He's done really well as a backup. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Um, OK. Other players, any other official or semi-official word coming down about players, Steve, that you've heard? Well, we uh we have a list As of a people mi- who will be out, but it, contract guys. We right? actually have a minor point. We had some roster moves today, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, right. I don't know who. I'm curious as to who's signing contracts for on behalf of the Redskins today. Frankly, um, but they signed a bunch of futures contracts: Paul Adams, Ryan B, Emmanuel Hall, Cameron Malvo, and Jordan Vesey. Um, for anybody who doesn't know this, what a futures contract is briefly, it's a way to. Uh, hold the rights for practice squad players. Right. What it's it's the future part means the fu- the contract can't come effective until the new league year starts. And so by signing a futures contract is basically saying uh, we're retaining your rights. You can come work out and be with the team. Mm-hmm. But the, technically speaking, the contract doesn't start till March. That's all it means. And this is practice squad guys. Again, I'm just curious who signed them. 
Yeah. Right. Well, no, it, did Dan Snyder do it? it it's I mean, it's I also kind of like, hey, welcome to training camp next year kind of concept, right? Oh, I, that is what it is. Yeah. Oh, it's it's we we like you enough to you know because the practice squad contracts expire at the end of the league year and those guys are gone. This is the way to keep the ones that they wanted mm-hmm. to keep. Don't they? they Ryan can, B in particular. Ryan B is bounce around back and forth between active and um and the right, practice and squad. One of those wide receivers I feel like was active for a game. I can't remember, but. I feel like we we've bounced a lot of wide receivers up and down. Yeah, I've lost track of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't know. Okay, well then, Steve, do you want to just run through quickly the list of guys that are kind of in their contract moments that oh, are kind of okay. up for grabs here? Sure. Um, I'm not going to read every one of these because mm-hmm. I'll just be me rambling. But in terms of the ones that are important um, to the team. John Bostic, the linebacker, mm-hmm. you know, oh, if they switch to a 4-3, you know, he may be gone no matter what. Um, Nate Orchard, you know, who made a name for himself toward the end of the year. Yeah. Um, you know, he's his contract expires. All these no names on corners and the cornerback group, most of them are expiring. About half of them are. The big names, though, Hill Hinches, um, he, his contract expires. Uh, I thought he did well. Eric Flowers. Right. His contract expires at the end of the year. That's important. Tony Bergstrom, you know. Eh. Get back up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. back up. I guess Donald Penn, the starting left tackle, mm-hmm. his contract expires. Obviously, Brandon Scherf uh, is certainly the biggest name on this list. Um, yeah, the two quarterbacks. Don't forget Case Keenum's contract also expires. Right. He's another one. And in terms of, let me see, anybody else important on IR? Um the Vernon Davis, the other one I wanted right, to mention. Right. Vernon Davis' contract expires, so whether or not he comes back, new coach, new system, you, we may have seen the end of Vernon Davis' NFL career, too. Well, so two of the positions and names that kind of stick to my mind, are, they're not really on that list, but you mentioned that we are losing the two quarterbacks, but Alex Smith apparently did a press conference today saying he plans on trying to come back next year. And yeah. be a backup, which I thought was interesting. He wants to play again, right? Um, and then we, we really didn't Alex cover how much this, all these moves, are going to impact Trent Williams' possibility of coming back. We, we touched it briefly, but yeah, I mean, look, I would put money on Trent Williams not coming back, no matter what. Even though these major moves have been made, I don't know if that relationship can be mended at this point, which is sad to say. But I mean, I don't know what else. What else to say about it? I wanted to ask about Alex Smith, though. There's been rumors about Alex Smith in the front office. There's been rumors about Alex Smith continuing to play for the team. What do you guys think about Alex Smith right well, now? He shot down um, the front office stuff pretty well today. So. Uh, yeah. and I Yeah. Guys, I mean, what did you expect him to say? Mm-hmm. Did you think he was going to stand up there and go, yeah, I'm done with football. I'm planning on moving into a front <laughs> office spot. I'm going to become hopefully the assistant GM. Thanks a lot. No, he's of course he's going to say I'm going to try and play, and I don't. I didn't take. I took zero out of that today, frankly. So it's still kind of up in the air. In other words, Steve is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what else he was going to say. What else is he yeah. going to say? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. want to play because the reason is he's got a contract, a long contract to go. He's not. He can't just come out and say I'm going to retire. Right. I'm kind of done. I'm just going to hang around, and they're going to pay me. And no, he's got to come out and say I'm going to come play. I'm going to come compete. That's the only thing you can say when you've got, what, three years left, four years on three, his deal? And, and yeah. he, we can't even realistically dump him yet because the salary impact yeah. would be too high. That's my point. I yeah. would see right. the only thing you could say was that. So I took absolutely nothing out of that. Yeah, S- still a lot to clarify, I guess, in yeah. those situations. Well, um, of the guys that you did mention, look, I'd be willing to give anyone a chance that show, that played above their pedigree this past year. So that's your Hentages, your Hentges guy, excuse me, um, your Flowers, flowers frankly, yeah. played above his ped- pedigree. I'd be really willing to let those guys come back. Anyone else? And I mean, sure, if, uh, I, you know, I'd, I'd work hard to try to get him back. But pretty much anyone else, I'm just not really that attached to. Do you guys feel any differently about those other guys? No. Well, you guys know I'm not attached to Ryan Kerrigan, so. <laughs> well, that's he, yeah. He's still in the contract. <laughs> well, guess what's going to happen at the end of this year? Snip, snip. He cut. Bye, bye. That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, nah, I, I don't. I'm, I'm just, I'm just messing with y'all. But um, I don't, I don't really have any attachments to any of the players. Um, I know Chris Thompson and isn't, isn't. He's in his last year. Well, I'm sorry. I take that back. Now that I think about it, because the running backs. Um, I want Adrian Peterson back. That's my guy. Um, I told you all plenty of times, and I probably said it on Twitter a thousand times. I love watching Adrian Peterson run, and. Yeah. and 
now that I have a reason to possibly attend a, a Redskins game at FedEx Field, I need to go see Adrian Peterson in person. So, yes, there is an attachment to at least one player that is Adrian Peterson. I need him on this team. Well, yeah, I, I meant to mention Thompson, by the way. Thompson's yeah. contract is yeah. also. And isn't AP him. technically still – he's got one year left. He I thought this was the left. second year. Oh, so he's on a two-year deal? Yeah. Yeah. Two-year yes. bet minimum yeah. deal. Correct. Right. Okay, so then that's my mistake. I thought he, I thought this was his right. last year. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, so this was the first of two years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know I what? mean, uh, I, I think it's more important for AP to be on this team now than uh, than it was in the last two years. Probably. I think we're really going to need that through line and that consistency with Rivera coming on board and mm-hmm. potentially a whole new mess of roster players. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. and he doesn't have a vet minimum deal, by the way. He's got a three point two five million dollar. Oh, cap I thought it, next I year. thought it was lower. No. Okay. No, it's not. But um. I'm with Jamal. I mean, I think I'm just uh, Darius Geis is a nice guy and all that and charismatic, but dude can't stay healthy. You Not know, uh, yeah. I mean, Chris Thompson can't stay healthy, and his replacement, who they drafted, Bryce Love, can't stay healthy either. Right. Adrian Peterson, the old man, is the only one who can stay healthy, That's and so right. they really need somebody who can actually be reliable. Right. You know, this is that whole injury Larry Hesting we were talking about. I mean, they have to have somebody who can actually run the ball. Mm -hmm. And so that's Adrian Peterson. And like Jamal, I think it's kind of a privilege to see him up close, you know, like this, like we're watching, you know, watching the Redskins. Mm -hmm. Um, You can say what you will about his child abuse thing, all that stuff. But from a football perspective, it is a true privilege to watch this guy play, I think. And so I hope he's back too, because they desperately need him. I I think he will be back because they can't afford to create more holes in the roster right now. Um, The, the, but I will say uh, Chris Thompson, he he's been been a shell of what he was when he was at his you know he- peak health, but True. he was a lot of fun to watch for like two mm-hmm. years. And, yeah. and nice guy, so I'll miss him in, in those respects. But uh, it is time to move on. I think he's been. And if Bryce Love seasons. isn't healthy, he maybe he gets a deal and comes back. And Bryce Love is just nowhere near. Yeah. You know, we haven't heard a peep from Bryce Love since he was drafted. Well, right? he's been on IR so have, since he was drafted. I know. I mean, yeah. we have no – I know that there's not been a single input at all into him, so we have no idea how healthy he is. He had a very serious knee injury, remember? Right. All right. Yeah. Was it a knee? Yeah, it was a knee, right? Knee. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think that's – I think the running back group – the running back group, the tight ends, and to a lesser extent, the corners, cornerback mm-hmm. group, those are a total – all of them are a total mess. All of them. My God, yeah, lots of movement coming in. All, all at of least those we have positions. bodies at the cornerback group. Who? Well, that's why I yeah. told. I think it's to a lesser extent. Yeah. They desperately need. They need to spend a very high draft pick on an elite corner for sure. You know, but they literally don't have people to line up healthy. Not name Adrian Peterson, a running back, right? You know, and they don't have any tight ends signed, but Jeremy Sprinkle. Who, if Jamal has given up on him, we all should too. Yeah. So, <laughs> those, we, this, those are disaster. Look, tight end, he's, he's playing out of position. Keep him at third string or fourth string. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the tight end group is actually going to be the toughest of those to, I think, fix this year because I was looking at free agents, not a whole lot. Uh, the draft, like, it's not good. Not good. The, the guys you might want in the draft are like going to be sixth, seventh rounders. It's it's a weird like you're going to have to gamble on some guys year. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is going to be a year of gambling, which, uh, you know what, sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Look, we've got a lot of moves coming up. So much more news is going to keep coming out over the next few days, and we're going to be back with you in just a couple. But this is such a momentous moment, guys. Give me your final thoughts on all of this stuff today. Bruce Allen, Hess, Santos, Rivera, whatever's on your mind, because this is the historic moment of the last 10 years for this team. Yeah. This was the shoe we needed to drop. Um First of all, we're sorry to anybody if anybody out there who actually wanted us to hear wanted to hear us recap the Dallas game. Nobody just, wanted that. Yeah, Nobody we didn't have it in it. No. So yeah. <laughs> if you're the one masochist out there, sorry. Uh but you know, final thoughts. Um, you know, d- Bruce Allen, glad you're gone. You were nothing but a complete train wreck, as I said last week. And more importantly, you're just a complete sleaze ball, mm. you know, who is totally unworthy of leading this team and leading men and women in the building anywhere. You were completely awful. You ruined this franchise. Vinny Serrato, of all people, ended up being a better exec than you, and he's doing radio in Baltimore. Think about that, Bruce. AM radio so, in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> so goodbye, good riddance. Hope to never hear your name ever again later.
Deuces. Yeah, yeah. He, he he really did tarnish his family's name, which is you know pretty damn impressive. Sad. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is impressive. That's a feat. Um, look, I'm I can't really add anything to that. I co-sign everything Steve said. What an embarrassment. What an awful ten-year tangent you've taken us on. I pray we can make some of this time up, and if we turn it around immediately within a year or two, I'm going to hate you that much more because you really were what were what was holding us back all it, this time. It may be bittersweet, you know. Looking forward to the new decade. I have to tell you that much. Um, I just I, it's hard for me to keep talking about the past, knowing that the best thing has happened for the future, at least for the foreseeable future. It happened today, so um, you know I, I I'm really excited for the 2020s. Um, and seeing where we can go. As it, look at me, I'm saying we. I don't even. I, I don't even say we anymore. But I'm saying we now. That's crazy. You're back with it, man. Hell yeah. Hey, Jamal, we are going. We, the four of us, are moving into the 2020s as well. So to yeah. that extent, yeah, it, it is. is we. The, yeah. the Hawks dies moving into a new decade. We never thought this would even make it to the 2020s decade, no, much less right. actually thrive and be a thing that at least some people care about. So we're about uh, you to know, be on our third coach, guys. That's that's pretty impressive for this for this little show. <laughs> does, does Calhoun count really? I mean, yes, he does count. Okay, uh, I guess. Count. Yeah. All right. It was All right. Six cool. weeks, or however long it was. Nine weeks. Hey, he, Ten weeks. He was oh. there. He counts. Speaking of the future, um, we are going to be transitioning to Wednesday awesome. shows. Cool. Right. One show through a week, the. Everybody. Through one show a week, released on Wednesdays through the end of the season, and then we'll probably go back to our normal off-season Mondays after that. But for the time being, we're going to Wednesdays. Um, we do have a good special guest coming up. We're not 100% sure when we're going to publish that, uh, be it before Wednesday or not. But So look for that. But irrespective of the guest, Wednesday is going to be the show for the next month or so. Beautiful. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Pleasure to be with you as always, and we here at the Hogstyle are so excited to be moving into the new era with you all. Keep checking back, hogstyle.com, bigheadsmedia.com, and we will see you all next time right here on the show. Take care. to a game of two scarves the world's first football and podcast brought to you by the two great mates who just so happen to support the deadly rivals of Newcastle and Sunderland each week we bring you a down to earth informed discussion on our respective football clubs everything from post match opinions to thoughts on who we thought did well who didn't and where we think the club needs to progress going forward we bring the odd guests along for the ride too, often from clubs outside of the region. So, as well as our own clubs, we do like to discuss the latest big news from around the world of the greatest game. So sit back, put your allegiances to one side and enjoy the chat and humour of a Game of Two Scarves podcast. <laughs>